All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Masters Madrid is officially underway, and the second set of games in the Swiss system get underway today was a massive matches upcoming. But after Genji take down Loud yesterday, so much reaction to the series from Loud, but also from other players around the world. Ethan says that, wow, Apex might be legit this season. Genji might be on the run to dominate the year. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, a couple of updates around the world, really, in the Valorant world, at least with Sully confirming that he's going to retire from casting. Done it for a Long time certainly wishing him the best going forwards but it's very challenging industry to break into sure you can do some work in tier two but especially with the way that right games operate it can be very challenging to really build the connections you need and, and make the progression that they would like to so yeah sully's gonna step away wishing him the best going forwards this also from doug though it was a big surprise to me really to see doug not on the talent lineup for madrid and this is one thing that has really caused a bit of friction in the community here because, as Doug says, yes, he, he's missing out on Madrid. And he was also not given co-streaming perms. So he's not going to be able to watch party. Now, people, of course, are comparing this to, like, the Cajal situation, right, where they didn't really want him to watch party and take away viewers from the mainstream. But I feel like with Doug, it's a bit of a different situation. So, I don't know. I don't know exactly whether Riot are going to change their mind on this. I just think that it's, it feels really bad, you know, to have some of your casters that have done so much for the scene then to not invite them to the event and then don't even allow them to watch party at the end. It's like, yeah, I don't know about that one. So he's going to do VOD streams and YouTube and stuff like this, but maybe they'll change their mind on that. I think generally people would like to see it. Quick update as well on the 100T situation with Asana. Yesterday, it seemed like Asana was playing on an alternate account to effectively pretends that he was getting benched for the team. That doesn't seem to be happening. Another screenshot as well going around again here with Asana actually playing on his proper accounts here with Bustio, Cryobang, etc. and EU. Again, 14-6 up on Lev. So yesterday we saw it was like 19-4. This time it's 14-6. But whatever you want to say, it feels like that Leviathan versus 100T, their scrums over the last few days has been relatively one-sided. And if that is the case, it makes things kind of spicy for 100T and for Lev themselves. Mainly for Lev, I would say, because if they're not looking so good and they're not so confident in their practice, yes, practice doesn't mean everything, but if you're trying to be the best team in the world and you're not feeling so confident, a bit demoralizing to get slammed again and again in practice. So that might indicate changes could be coming. Of course, the teams have some time to figure that out if they would like to because Masters Madrid happens for the next couple of weeks. The first matches are right at the start of April. So that would be an ideal opportunity for these teams if they want to get a job done to do exactly that. But also from Nevera, right? So changes happening around the world here. Former KC man. And we know what KC are up to today after their major changes. But as Nevera says, announcing his departure officially from the Valorant competitive scene marks the beginning of a new chapter. I've reached a mutual termination agreement with KC, allowing me to pursue my dreams in CS. So he's going to go back to CS, obviously for CS2 going forwards. So he talks about that, wishing the Vera the best going forwards, of course, and also his brother Scream, as he says, we have reached a mutual agreement with KC and I'm now a free agent. So um, seems like his plan is still to stay in the Valorant side, but I guess we shall see. So wishing the best for Scream and the Vera, of course, a big part of the Valorant world over the last couple of years but yeah it's funny how it's worked out really isn't it with KC and all the changes they made and all the drama of last season and now where KC find themselves today as we'll discuss here in a couple of seconds. Zelsis as well got his predictions in yesterday didn't precisely go to plan but I did want to mention here on the Sentinel side really just how if you're another esports organization are you meant to compete with Sentinels from a social media angle? A lot of you guys saw this yesterday. Read the first letter of our last 15 tweets. And I was like, as soon as I saw this, I knew what I was going to see when I went in to have a look at their last 15 tweets. But it is incredible how they managed to pull this off, I'm not going to lie. So yeah, here we go. Benji Fish has to face this tomorrow. We get the B, we get the U, we get the white. Maybe at this point, like it was possible to figure out the song was going on, right? Because some of the captions, looking back at it, right? You think, damn, that caption was kind of interesting. Maybe there was more to it. Right, but yeah, just the way they execute this is so good. So B U Y T, and then of course if we go down here, we get you know H E. So by the S E N, and then bundle of course to close it out. So. Yeah, the fact that they've been planning this for like several days now, I thought was just pretty sensational. Like it's been a week, really. Even the curry tweet was where it actually started, which I, I thought was just spectacular. So what are you meant to do to compete with this kind of level of social media mastery that Sentinels are putting on the timeline right now? And of course, 
Their team ain't bad either. We'll discuss them here in a couple of seconds. This was worthy of mention though on the Tomasi side for the KC team because Sean Gares here mentions that when Slasher leaked the Aspas probably leaving loud move that happened late last year when, yeah, the rumour was that basically it was during the World Championship really when Aspas was apparently going to leave loud and that turned out that it actually was happening. At the time, however, Tomasi was mentioned by Frodz as a man to look for as a potential candidate. He says, you know, when I said different country, I meant Portugal. I'd rather look at Tomasi than any of those two. You're the only person that's been given that name, so don't leak it, please. Of course, but now Tomasi is very much solidly signs and doing very well indeed. So, um, yeah, I guess it just shows that Frod knows Gun in this particular case. But we're going to discuss Tomasi here right about now because that KC team has got off to the start that they expected to get off to. This is, of course, uh, Narrate here. He had an interview after the series as well where, you know, he's just been fine. It's great to see. And here's KC. Now, they get the 2-0 victory against their FPX. FPX, man, they, this is a funny series, I'm not going to lie, because the way they played in a couple of these moments, they had their chances. That there was like an all-time throw for Berlin on a couple of occasions. It wasn't just Berlin, to be fair. But um, yeah, they play it in a funny way, FPX. Yes, this is what Edward Gaming, I think, said the other day, that the gun skill, the talent is there. But the discipline and the way to play the game is not always there for some of the Chinese teams. I think they'll get there over time and um, obviously a bit of a mixed team anyway. And it was a pretty clean victory in the end for KC. So yeah, a 13-10 result on the Lotus, a 13-8 result here on the Icebox, which was FBX's pick. But again, it's Narrate really coming to play here, right? 47-28. and 28. Tomasi didn't have his greatest series. Neither did Martin, actually. And I think that's the scary sign, really. Like, Narrate has been great and also makes me question. Narrate was... One one of the top prospects from the America's tier two sides. But let's be real, there's other players like Narrate out there. I'm convinced about it. And, you know, you can argue that you look at tier one, you see many, even America's tier one is super strong, obviously. But to be fair, there's players in tier one that have been recycled, you could argue, and maybe that shouldn't be the case. There should be guys like Narrate, like Verno, like Scuba, like some of these other guys at the top of challenges that should be getting offers and opportunities in tier one because we see what Narrate has done over in the EMEA side continues to dominate. And I just thought this is a really scary result in some ways for the opposition, just because Martin will almost certainly get better as the tournament progressed. He did during the kickoff in EMEA. I expect that to continue. I expect that to be the case of Tomasi as well. So I think that KC are a real threat here. They get the job done as was required of them. And Narrate, the of course, with his classic 2-0 versus FPX tweet when everything closes out. But the series that I was really looking forward to, of course, was Loud versus Gen G. Two titans of their respective regions. There was big discussion lately on, well, you know, is the, um, is the APEC region in downfall? DRX didn't even qualify. Paper X losing in the finals to Gen G. Are Gen G any good? Are they legit? Rumor had it as of yesterday that yeah, Gen G are damn good and they're smoking everyone in practice right now. And that's exactly what we saw yesterday, pretty much. Yes, Loud and Less especially played well. This moment on the icebox was particularly impressive, but it didn't even massively matter because after he gets this crazy three piece here to close out the rounds, Gen G with the Caron Ninja Diffuse on the final round, the balls to do this in your first international was super impressive and they won it again with a diffuse that was stuck in the very final round of the series but Jinji it blows my mind actually how Global Esports had texture on their team last year like their texture they're not yet they, these guys and uh, they couldn't really deliver anything like texture is nasty Caron is unbelievable and like I don't know where I mean look we know where they found these players from but it's just really impressive what they've pulled off here and especially as Lakia like, yeah, he was just chilling, right? And the rest of the guys were carrying him through it. Less had a good series here. But, yeah, well, look, we know Loud are somewhat vulnerable. But they still looked really good in the Americas. And they went down to Sentinels in the end in a 3-2 fashion that was a very close series, right? So there was a big question for this tournament. Which is the stronger America's team? Is it Loud? Is it, is it Sentinels? What will happen if they were to match up again in the finals? But we have seen the first real indication here of how good Gen G are. They won 13-11 on Loud's pick on the icebox. Loud then bounced back impressively on the breeze that they think they're really good at, actually. But then the ascent was 13-5. Like Gen G just crushed them on a final map of the series. Caron, Meteor, these guys all went off. And it raises the question as to whether Apex, um, you know, supposed downfall has been rather exaggerated as 
Nathan says, this might well be Apex year. Gen G looks scary good. And maybe that's understandable, right? We know that the World Championship, we're pretty sure, is going to be in Seoul this year in Korea. So it's interesting just to look ahead. But last year, the World Champions, of course, were Evil Geniuses with Ethan from the Americas side. The year before, of course, it was Loud from the Americas, but, you know, from Brazil. The year before that, before the franchising kind of thing was happening, it was 2021. It was Ascend, of course, that won the inaugural one from EMEA. So maybe it is about time that this year is Apex year. And there were questions when Genji beat Paper X, they beat DRX whether they were the real deal. I think they've shown as of yesterday they are most certainly the real deal. But still, FNS says that on what he's seen, he feels like Sentinels are maybe the most accomplished and the best prepared team here for this event to actually go on and win the entire thing. I told you guys this before. I think that these guys look the best. Sentinels, to me, look like the best team right now right at this current moment they look the best but i have not watched any apac whatsoever this is coming from someone who has not watched any apac teams today was the first time i watched a genji match and they fucking beat loud so it could be paper x or genji as well but i feel just based off how much i've watched sentinels from all the way through off season to now, they to me look like the best team in terms of just pure synergy. <clears throat> So this is how things look in the Swiss stage after the first round of games. So the way this works is if you go 1-0, you play another 1-0 team in the next round. If you go 0-1, you play another 0-1 team in the next round. So louder 0-1, FPX are 01, and um, yeah, we'll see today. EDG Paper X, and then of course Sen Heretics. Massively looking forward to that one. By the way, if you lose two series, you're done. So two series in a row, you're over. Louds have to win the next series, FPX have to win their next series, or they'll be out of the tournament. And if you go 2-0 then that's a very nice cushion going into the playoffs situation. So massively interesting games. They're coming up in just a few hours' time. Did want to mention a quick reaction here as well from Sadak and the Loud guys in general. He discussed it in an interview after the game. It's exactly how they played. And, you know, he was obviously disappointed with their result. But as he says, there's a lot of Valorant yet to be played. We didn't have a good start. But at the same time, this will serve us as fuel to smash everybody else. So um, his feeling is that there's more to come from Loud. They can play better than they did. And they're going to make a big run now in the losers bracket effectively of this tournament but you know it's far from over yet for these guys but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time